So welcome back to Newcastle Central, back from a couple of weeks summer holidays back in the UK. Uh, I had a really good time, um, went out to the National Railway Museum in York, uh, so got to ride the train from Durham down to York and back, so I uh, had a little bit of fun uh, watching some trains go by there, put together a video. Went up to Scotland for uh, five or six days as well, got to ride in the Strathspey Railway, that was really cool, it's a restored heritage line, runs an IVAC class 2MT, uh, just about 15 miles or so uh, up a line and back down again up in the Scottish Highlands. That was pretty cool as well. Really enjoyed that. Uh, again, I put together a video riding there. Uh, but uh, now that I'm back, a little bit refreshed, um, you know, a little bit motivated to get going as well. So ballasting has been going on uh, pretty, pretty, pretty for real now. Uh, this is all glued down. All this is now glued down. I have a little bit of cleanup left to do, just in a couple of little spots uh, where I hadn't quite got the ballast cleared out. But this is all now glued down. All the point work is done as well. It gets a little bit fiddly in there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and keep moving around. I've got a lot more of the station to do, don't worry. So I've moved out most of the trains now. Uh, That's why it's looking a little bit empty. They're all kind of parked all the way around the layout here. Uh, so what's really cool about ballasting is that if uh, you do a search on YouTube on how to ballast model railroads, uh, you'll you know come back with thousands of different ways to do it. Um, and for every 10 videos that you'll watch, you'll probably end up with about 13 different ways that you can actually do it. Um, only somewhat joking and being facetious to have, but uh, there are some pretty common uh, ways to do it that most people end up following along the same kind of lines but ballasting is also one of those where you know you you, you often do come up with your own little uh, variation on techniques so this is by no means the right way to do it this is just the way that I do it and again this is a combination of what I found works from experience over the years on a couple of different layouts from the club that I'm part of where I've picked up some techniques for things like using the um, alcohol uh, so now that this is all done and cleaned up and dried and I can run trains over it, uh, I'm going to go ahead and keep on making some progress uh, and then I'll do some, some little segments as to, uh, as to how I go about doing it just so that you get an idea how you could start to do it yourself. Alright, so first things first is, uh, as if by magic, all the station <laughs> has disappeared. Uh, if you're somewhat new to Newcastle Central, uh, when I went about building the station platforms, they're all designed to be removable, specifically for this particular part when it comes to ballasting. Um, in reality, once the ballast is down, I'm probably actually going to glue those card platforms in place, um, just so that they're not going to move around any. Um, but they were always designed to be removable, so that when it comes to doing the ballasting, I'm not going to have any problems. Uh, all the station platforms are the scale scenes model kits, uh, so they're all made from card. I had looked at doing Metcalf, and there's a couple of other different manufacturers that do the same kind of thing, but the card platforms to me, even with putting on um, multiple coats of matte varnish on the outside and on the inside and underside, um, there is still that danger that because essentially you end up uh, spraying with water. So once you got the ballast down and in place, you then spray it to make it all wet. And then what you end up doing is putting on a mix of PVA glue and water. So that's a 50-50 mix of PVA glue and water within just a little bit of alcohol. And we'll get into why alcohol in, uh, uh, in a, an upcoming clip. But that's essentially a lot of liquid that's going to be around a lot of cod. Um, so even now I find that the matte varnish has been working very well in terms of moisture. I haven't had any problems with uh, the card warping or starting to pick up any moisture out here in the shed. Um, but when it comes to putting on that water spray to uh, to moisten up the ballast and then putting on that 50-50 mix of PVA glue and water, just didn't want the card around it. So um, depending on how you're designing your, your station, um, or your scenic work, you might want to look at that, make it removable both in terms of just maintenance if you want to do any kind of wiring or specifically when it comes to ballasting. Um, so all, all those platforms and they moved out of the way. The trains are also out of the way. They're over on the, the north side of the station now. I'm going to be working on the south side of the station. Um, what I'm probably going to do is go ahead and ballast uh, these four lines for platforms uh, 9, 10, 11, and 12 because um, there's also then four pieces of point work that we have to do and that gets um, a little bit tedious so I'm probably going to go ahead and do that and maybe show um, 
a couple of clips along the way so you can see how it's going and then I'm probably going to do then a how-to montage to show you going about these other main lines here um, that basically have a platform is two, three, four, five, and then we'll look at how we do some of the point work as well because the point work is a little bit different. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make a start on 9, 10, 11, and 12 coming down into that point work and then we'll come back and have a look and see where we're at. And now platforms 9, 10, 11, and 12 and kind of all that entry switch work pretty much ready. Uh, I've got a little bit more cleanup uh, just to do on a few of the actual ties just to make sure that there's no kind of lingering ballast on there before you start to glue it down. You can clean it up a little bit once it's done, but I try and be as methodical as I can do uh, to get it cleaned up. So you will find is that the point work uh, is all pretty much clear. Uh, I've done the ballast sides, um, but there's no ballast actually in the middle, uh, around about where the blades will move and around where the actual points themselves are. That's intentional. Uh, what I do is come back later on and just uh, pend in PVA glue, which we'll look at uh, in an upcoming clip in a, in a couple of minutes here. Pen in some of the PVA glue, uh, just the, the, the pure PVA glue mix, sprinkle in a little bit of the ballast, let that glue, and then vacuum away what's left. So there is a little bit of excess around here as well. Uh, I'll vacuum that up once we're done as well. Uh, there are a couple of spots here. Uh, there's another one kind of hanging out in the middle there where I've got a little bit of a gap in the baseboard. Um, so I probably just need to fill that a little bit too um, and, uh, and put that in. But it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect at this point. Ballast is not going to be perfect in the real world. And one thing that I've learned from previous layouts is that you can go through and be um, painstaking when it comes to doing this. You can try and make everything absolutely perfect. Um, I think at one point um, on an old layout many years ago, uh, not on curves like this but on the straights, I think I was even going through with a steel rule and just kind of pushing up everything so that it was perfectly straight. Um, the reality is that that's not really how it would be. So if we swing back over here, um, you know, it is kind of a, a rough edging. And part of that is also because I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to be doing on the on the actual edging in here and then on the back there, but you wouldn't get perfectly straight. Um, edging to the ballast. Uh, I've also kind of just left it around here as well. I'm not exactly how how far down the platform comes. I can figure that out once it's in place and what I'm going to do on the side there. But it's, uh, you know, you can come back later on and add a little bit to it. And in fact, what you'll find is that there are a couple of spots if we zoom in where you can kind of still see that black foam under there. So there's a spot here, 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 here. And uh, you'll get those little spots. That's as the ballast is kind of forming. Um, that edge. Uh, so if we come and look on some of the actual track work that I've got, my underlay here is the Woodland Scenic Foam Rod Bed. Uh, you can get the same with cork as well, right? It's kind of got that tepid edge. Uh, one of the reasons why I like using this is that it makes it pretty easy to then kind of get that edging. Um, so there are areas where it doesn't perfectly fall. Um, I, again, at this point, I don't go through and try and make it 100% perfect because once the glue goes down as well and it will start to move ever so slightly um, Once you start to glue don't then play around with it and again, we'll look at that in an upcoming clip um, So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this uh, Let it dry uh, probably at least overnight and then we'll come back and can do some touch-up work and then we can start to actually do gluing of uh, the point work ballast as well, so Time to start gluing in here, and then we'll come back just before we then break for the evening and let this all dry up. That is that area. Now, with all the glue down, um, did it in a few different sections. Um, what's super important is to use uh, copious amounts of water. Don't be shy with the water. Um, and again, when we get on to um, showing the kind of the montage of the how-to part, uh, yeah, don't be shy in the water. It's really the water that helps. Um, if you don't have the water down, then basically even with the 50-50 water and PVA glue mix, um, it, the glue is still going to kind of pool. But if, so long as the ballast is pretty wet, uh, when you spread on, just kind of seep in. A little disappointing, there's a couple of areas um, where I didn't really go all to plan. Um, and around here, I think I just had a little bit too much ballast um, in between all the ties. I try to clean it out as much as I can. And so you're going to see, especially in there, 
this ballast that's kind of flowed up on top of the tires which is uh, a little disappointing there was also one area here where I had kind of bumped as I was moving around uh, and came towards that back siding on platform 12 same thing a little bit too much ballast maybe is flooded and everything else seems like it's gone okay um, and again this is kind of where patience um, and experience is kind of leading me here um, what I would really uh, want to do is get rid of that ballast right now um, certainly can do you know I've got some ballast here and I've actually got some ballast here coming at the platform 11 um, so yeah what I would want to do is go in and, and clean it away but at this point honestly I, I personally feel like you need to leave it um, if you start to move things around now then you can make a whole kind of gobby gluey wet mess of ballast and it doesn't always work out great um, we spin around to the section that's already been done um, I encountered the exact same problems over here and for the most part when you look at it you can't tell most of it does clean up okay um, so really what I'm trying to get to is that there's going to be things like this and so part of this video is kind of you know peeling back the curtains and you can see that this just looks like a mess at the moment um, if you watch some of the other big channels where they've done how-to ballasting videos it's the same thing but the finished product is actually pretty good when you look at it you can't really tell that there'd been a whole bunch of mess that was going on at the time um, yeah so at the moment I'm gonna let this set uh, hopefully by tomorrow evening it's you know, fairly mild at the moment not too hot not too cold um, so hopefully this dries okay overnight at least enough that we could then start to paint in um, the ballast around the point work and then we can actually start to do some of these how-to parts on uh, on these other platforms so let this go come back tomorrow or maybe the next night and uh, hopefully this is all set and looks pretty good okay so it's the next night and this has dried up pretty good um, it's a little soft maybe in a couple of little spots which is kind of what I was expecting it's only at least 24 36 hours um, so I'm gonna leave it uh, for another night before I start playing around with this anymore just to make sure that it's got fully time to set um, sometimes you find that there are still somewhat spongy spots where there wasn't quite enough glue that soaked through and so underneath is still a little bit soft so the outer side um, of the ballasting has hardened but underneath it's still a little bit soft so I need to go back and put a little bit more glue in some areas I don't think that's the case here I think it's actually worked out pretty good I'm just gonna give it like I say one more evening to harden up what I am going to do instead um, is make a start on doing kind of the how-to part of ballasting these lines um, just so you can see how I go about doing it and again you know you watch 10 videos on YouTube you'll get 13 different ways on how you can do ballasting so this is going to be uh, how I do it we can then give that um, a night or so to set um, and I want basically <laughs> I want to kind of get in the groove on doing these points I've got the four points from what I did last night and I'm going to have one more point here that I would need to do uh, painting of the glue and then gently putting in the ballast um, so I'll do a little how-to part on how we do some of the other lines give that a night or two and then we can have a how-to clip on how you go about ballasting around some of the point work as well all right, trying to figure out the best way to be able to do this, and there's a few different things that you need. First off is some kind of ballast. I go with Woodland Scenics Grey Blend, a uh, fine ballast Grey Blend. That's called B1393. Um, I've tried a few different ballasts over the years, and I find this one works pretty good with being the fine ballast. This is probably more aimed at N gauge rather than double O gauge or H O gauge. Um, there is a medium ballast, which is probably more traditionally for double R air show gauge. Um, I find that probably is a little bit too big. This works well, and the grey blend works uh, pretty well as well. Maybe in, in the foreground you can see some areas that were already done. Um, it's got a nice little mix of probably two or three different tones of grey, so like that. Um, some kind of white glue as well. Um, probably not the school glue. The school glue. Um, is uh, is probably not ideal because I don't think it's quite as tacky. But any any kind of just regular multi-purpose white glue will work. Uh, spray bottle, so some kind of spray bottle um, to be able to spray down the ballast once you've let it. And you need somewhere to be able to spread it. So what I do, kind of because I'm cheap, is uh, I actually use a spoon. 
$80 spoon. And all I do is I'll spoon it on and you'll see how I spread it out. Again, different ways that you can do ballasting. There are ballast spreaders. Um, I believe it's Bachman that make a ballast spreader. Um, but it's, I don't know, over here it's probably like $25, about 15 pounds, something like that. Um, I don't know, for me I find that a little expensive for something that's just going to be spreading out ballast. Um, and to be honest, because I've got so many curves and I've got so much point work around Newcastle Central, I didn't really feel like it was worthwhile. So the end gauge stuff that I was doing, um, you know, the club that I'm part of, one of the guys there is, you know, basically a master. There's a couple of guys who are basically master scenic guys, and all they use uh, is just a regular spoon with the ballast. So you need that. Um, I then use a little bottle, a little applicator bottle. I take the top off. A little applicator bottle. And so that's why I mix up uh, the water and glue mix. And then you need something to kind of break the surface tension when you're doing that as well. Different ways you can do this. Some people use washing up liquid. What I use is some kind of rubbing alcohol. Um, so normally I'd use like 90 or 91 percent when it comes to cleaning. Um, I find that the 70 percent works well. This is just the bottle that I happen to grab um, in the garage and it works just fine. The reason that you're doing that is when you put on the water and the glue mix you need something that's going to kind of break the surface tension um, of the ballast. Um, just the way that it goes on. If you just put this on neat 50-50 water and glue mix, um, it doesn't really run all that well, it doesn't spread all that well. Um, so you spray the ballast down with the water first, that helps, and then something to break the surface tension as well, and so I go, I go with alcohol. Um, other stuff that might help is some kind of brush. Uh, it's just, just kind of El Cheapo brush just to help spread out the ballast and again that's more so because I'm using the spoon rather than the ballast spreader but even the ballast spreader you would need something. Um, technique I use for then um, making sure that the ballast gets spread out and doesn't sit on top of the cable ties is just a screwdriver and we'll see in the how-to videos how I go around and tamper that. Um, I've seen some people that use electric toothbrushes and that would be great but again I'm kind of cheap and I don't want to uh, just use uh, an electric toothbrush that we already have and replace one. Uh, I'll go out and buy one just for this purpose. So um, when uh, when I'm up for getting a new electric toothbrush, maybe I'll have one and I'll use that instead. But for now that works. One other thing um, is a very small electric uh, vacuum cleaner. And if we turn it on, I mean, it uh, really doesn't do a whole lot, but it is enough to at least be able to pick up um, a little bit of ballast that they can get left around. It's absolutely, um, you know, what you need. Honestly, the most expensive thing that all this comes down to is ballast. So, you know, this is $13 or eight pounds, maybe something like that, eight pounds, nine pounds for uh, for the big shaker box. Um, and I've done um, what you've seen so far. So platforms 9, 10, 11, and 12 coming down the throat um, and then that south side approach into the station. So, I mean, this is a good size layout, so I'm going through quite a lot of ballast. Um, you know, so this is this is where the bulk of my money is going. So I had to run down the model store this morning to be able to get another big shaker, uh, so that we can go ahead and do that. So let's move a bunch of this out of the way. Alright, first things first. There's already a bunch of bars that's kind of hanging around from what I had done before. So I'm going to try with the vacuum cleaner just to clean all of that up, um, and just in general make sure that the track's fairly clean before we start putting down um, putting down this new ballast. So, not the best vacuum cleaner at all. Um, it is just battery powered, and really all you're trying to do is just uh, collect up as much as you can again. So, if we take that off, it's not a whole bunch, but we have picked up some more ballast, and so what we can do is then just drop that back inside the tub. Um, again, kind of because I'm cheap, I want to try and reuse as much of that as I can do. It's not as big of a deal here when you've just got the ballast that was glued down, but when you come into doing uh, the stuff around the point work, that's when uh, you can reclaim quite a bit of ballast 
um, because you're not actually gluing it in with that water and PVA mix, you're just kind of putting it in, um, panning the glue on and then putting the ballast on top, you do end up with a lot of wear. So I do it just kind of out of habit, but really that's more for when I come to, to doing the point work. So let's get started with actually putting some ballast down. So we're going to start with this curve line here just because there's no point work. So it's an easy way to kind of see how to go about it. So the way I do it, and again, I said it was like the third time, 10 different videos, 13 different ways to do ballast. This is the way I do it. Doesn't necessarily mean that this is the way that you have to do it. And I just put a little bit on the spoon and then just run that along, tapping it all out. Do the middle of the sleepers first and between the rails. What I'm going to find is that you may have to come back and spread a little bit out, but I'm going to go over with a brush as well and do the exact same thing on the outside of the rails. This is where you maybe put a little bit more because even though um, I said earlier I had used the Woodland Scenic Foam Underlay, um, there are still some areas where I don't quite have that siding, just the way up the curves of the tracks laid out I'm right kind of on the edge of that curve and so I am having to build up a curve with the ballast anywhere that kind of sloped away and I need to make sure that I've got enough to be able to fill in here as well I want to just roar on the best board just a little bit to cover it up like that is enough and again this is one of the reasons why when it comes to the ballast spray you can't really you can't really do that as well I don't find and again because it's curved um, you would still have to probably come around and do some amount of this yourself even with one of the ballast spreaders I do like them don't get me wrong and I have seen some really good results with them I'm always torn when I look at them and you know is it really that much quicker to do it and I don't know maybe if I had a whole bunch of struts it might be a little bit more appealing but I think just the way that I have this set up at the moment I don't know if it's uh, if it would really be all that worthwhile. I'm just trying to fill in. And there. Uh, okay, that's that part done. Switch over now to the brush. Again, a little piece of junk. That's probably something I picked up with the vacuum cleaner. It's uh, my neighbor shabby little dog. They've got visitors, so you may well be hearing him throughout the video as well. Um, so here, all I'm going to be doing is just starting to brush this out and so we're kind of doing the middle of the in between the rails first and then also just doing the outside the rails and we're not trying to be perfect right now all we're trying to do is spread out the ballast in real life this wouldn't be perfect It'd be a pretty good job it wouldn't be perfect and again this is just kind of from experience and doing this on a couple of different layouts now. I don't know how many layouts I've built. I've got at least two serious layouts. That this is just one of those things that you have to be patient with and you have to just take your time with. So again even with the ballast spreader I don't know you know other than that initial part where you're putting it on as opposed to doing the spoon, you know, you still, still typically would need to come through and do this. And so what you'll end up finding is when I come to the end here, I can actually spread this ballast a lot further down than I originally had. And this is just the first pass, we'll come back around again. You will see a bunch of ballast that's sitting on top of the sleepers, and again, we'll come around and take care of that. And so what I'm trying to do is have enough ballast in between each of the sleepers set as a covering but you don't want to completely fall so if you look at some of the existing ones it sits below the level of the sleeper and the reason being is that when the glue then goes over the top if it's full then you're still adding liquid in and so it, it does raise it up a little bit when it raises up a little bit that's when it then goes even more over the sleepers and so I've got that in a few areas on that section that I did last night so that's why you want to be I guess that tick take some amount of time here to, to make sure that you brush through spread out as much as you can leave enough so that it's covered so that you don't just have that underlayer beneath it and you're not going to have too many problems when this glue and water mix goes in 
This might not be super exciting to watch. I mean, you think watching paint dry is exciting, watching someone else do a ballast thing. I know. <laughs> I have done it, but it is one of those things where, you know, people are always curious, you know, how did you do the ballast thing? How did you do the ballast thing? And now that I'm at the point of doing my own ballast thing, it's just like, okay, taking a lot of different ideas from different people over the years. And like I say, you kind of put your own spin on it after you've done it for a while what works, what doesn't work, and some people love ballasting, some people hate it. Can kind of get a little bit painstaking, maybe. I think in between the rails there, I've got it spread out pretty good. I mean, you'll find this naturally, then, they've already got most of that edging done, you know? Didn't really have to do a whole lot, which is kind of there. A little bit of a gap over here, but I think that's more, as I have a little bit of a gap in bass boards. Right there, it's okay. You can just use an angle brush just to kind of help form that contour again. Doesn't need to be perfect, won't be perfect in real life. And honestly, if it is perfect, like I had said in the video last night, where you know, at one point I remember trying to come around with a metal rule to try and create a straight edge, and you know, the reality was my LCD was happy, but it didn't actually look that great when it was done because that's not how it would be in real life and you know you can you, you can do that and then you can come back later and add weeds and stuff like that to it but for the most part I'm not concerned about an absolutely perfect finish because that's not how it would be and just trying to spread this out give just enough of a covering that you've uh, you've got your underlay covered it seems like a long time ago now, it's probably before Christmas or right around the Christmas break. Um, I went around and did best weathering on all this as well, so I'll link to that video now. If you click in the corner of the screen. But I'd, I had come around and done best weathering on here, and essentially what I mean by that is I came around just with a, a spray can. And I basically spread all of the best board, the track, the underlay cleaned up the top of the track again just so that I had some kind of weathering going on so it wasn't just bad bass ball and it wasn't just shiny track because you know it's now been what eight almost nine months probably since I had done that time goes by pretty quick I just had a lot of other stuff going on but where was I going with this yeah so the advantage of me having done that was that now that I'm coming around and doing this again I'm not as concerned if I end up with areas where I have a little bit showing underneath because it's not going to be just bare cork and part of that again is I'd use that woodland scenic foam so it wouldn't just be bare cork it would be black and this is a little bit more brownish kind of color to it maybe a little drag a little bit more back over here and this is where you can see even with that edging it's not always perfect a little bit more on there, and then we can start to clear away. There we go, a little bit on that far side too. See how that looks. I mean, yeah, some of this will, it will kind of, you know, figure itself out positioning wise. Once you put the water and once you put the glue on, as the that glue and water mix settles it will pull it down a little bit and it'll lose a mess so it's getting buried this is one of the, the manhole covers that i had from scale model scene so we'll clear that out today a little bit and get that back in place so it doesn't look too bad and you can do those after the fact but i found that it works out pretty okay just to glue it in as part of the ballast so. Well, it looks okay for now. So, you know, I'm going to be looking and saying, okay, that's great. And again, it's just part of, you know, pulling back the curtains a little bit and saying, well, that's still kind of a mess. There's still ballast all over the place. Um, am I now going to go through painstakingly and clear all of that? And it's just like, well, there is a step where I am going to go through a very, very small brush and clear all of that. But now this is where a couple of different techniques um, to clear that. All you want to try and do is get some kind of vibration along the line. Just a gentle vibration kind of knocks all that out of the way.
like that. Just by magic, it will clear itself up. So that's why you could use uh, an electric toothbrush and just run an electric toothbrush along the rail. And that's all you're trying to do because the ballast is so light. This kind of clear itself up. And that's one where, you know, if, once you figure out exactly how much ballast you can leave in between these rails, then that process gets pretty quick because you don't have a whole bunch of extra. What, you can, what ends up happening as well is when you put the glue on, you end up with ballast that comes back over the sleepers, is when you're tapping that, it bounces around and bounces around. But there's nowhere really for it to fall. It falls in between the sleepers, and that's already full, and so it ends up back on the sleeper again. Um, you know, so again, that's just kind of you know practice, figure it out in your own layout until you see how much you need to leave between the sleepers. And now I am just you know very quickly going through here, and just making sure that it's clear. There are some white spots that you see left. It's not actually ballast that's in there. That's just where some of the paint has come off. Um, from that weathering process. The other thing that I'm doing as I'm going along is looking and making sure on the inside of the rails I don't have any ballast that's sitting. So that's why you know, there's a white spot here. It's not actually ballast. And as much as we want, that's just a white spot on the rail. You know, there's some here. It's just dust almost rather than ballast. But you need to try and keep that inside clear because that's why the train wheels are going to be. doesn't matter so much on the outside, but on the inside it does. I'm going to lean over. And again, by tapping that with the, with the screwdriver, that would clear it up. And if you used an uh, electric toothbrush, that would clear it up. That all looks pretty clear as well. So, on to the glue part now. So now I have a bunch of glue uh, that's already in here. I have a bunch. I have a little bit. Sorry, I should say. I have a little bit of glue that's left in here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use that up. And I'm going to get everything else ready so that I can quickly do a little bit more when it comes to it. But to start out with, I'm going to do a little short section just so we can use up what's left in here. And then I'll show you how I mix up some glue. So, spray bottle. And again, don't be shy. You can use copious amounts of water here. You want to be at quite a distance. I'm probably about 12 inches away. I'm, I'm, I'm well off camera here. I'm about 12 inches away. And you can see a little bit of that. So I'm just coming in from the other side just to make sure that I've got it all nice and wet. That's pretty much it. If you get too close and you start to blow the ballast away, and so when you're doing it, you see you get clumps of ballast that are starting to blow away, especially on the edging. It probably means you're too close back up. or make, or make a little bit of a... Um, a little bit of a finer mist to your spray. I'm going to shake up this glue a little bit since I made this up last night. Hopefully it's still okay. Let's see. And so then all, I, all I'm going to do, oh, I start about here, is then just run that down in the middle of the track. Just above the top of the rails. And just kind of let that seep through. And again, because you spread the water on, because you got the 50-50 water mix and a little bit of the alcohol, uh, you know, that seeps through pretty good. And come around and do the outside. And here I am kind of running along the top of the rail. You can see the ball kind of bounce along. That's just to kind of help it spread out. So what you're finding is that that's kind of getting sucked in and drawn in to the ballast. Let's come around and do that other side as well. That's now going to start to seep through underneath. You can see parts of here are getting a little bit wet too. And so now you can start to come around. And again, I'm doing this from somewhat of a height. Again, this is you know, just the experience and how your ballast ends up going. And probably, I don't know, what's that, an inch, inch and a half maybe. And if you get a little bit too close, then doesn't quite work out but that's all my that's all my glue done so now is a good opportunity to show how I make up some more so I'll empty out a little bit of the water from the spray bottle here and again we're going for about a 50-50 mix well, I'm going to do this 
see you can still see it without pouring water or blue everywhere. So I'm going to fill this up to about halfway. Something like that maybe. I'll put all, make it an absolute mess trying to keep this so that I'm not covering up the camera. Add some glue as well. And again, this is just water. It'll dry up. Don't worry too much about it. Squeeze in some glue. This is just a little bottle that I had lying around. I do have a big bottle in the garage. But again, I typically find that small bottles, the smaller than um, applicator bottles like this, work out a little bit better. And we just have to make up this mixture more often. I find it a little bit easier to work with than one of the bigger bottles. Not quite as heavy. So that's probably about 50-50 mix. And then the final part, as you know, I was saying, some of the alcohol. And we're just going to splash in a little bit of alcohol on top. And that's where, you know, a lot of other people use things like washing up liquid. I go with the alcohol. Um, don't drink it. It's not that kind of alcohol. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I have seen um, some problems when people have used uh, washing up liquid. Um, I do actually believe that on one of the first layouts that I did uh, was just an 8 by 4 foot plywood layer. I feel like I had problems there as well where it basically uh, discolored the ballast and all the edge of the rail kind of got a green tint or a blue tint. And So some people will say, well, just use, just use the blue washing up liquid, just use the green washing up liquid, just use the yellow washing up liquid. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, uh, again, this was one of the guys um, that has always seen it work in the club that I'm part of. He was the one that kind of turned me on to using that. Use a little bit of water. Not quite sure how far down I had come. Let's try some more water on. But yeah, so it was one of the guys from the local club that turned me on to using the alcohol. Because um, again, it's just something to break that surface tension. I think I'm going to get water back on something as you've already glued, but that's fine. Now again, just come down the middle of the rails. That then soaks in. Come down the outside of the rails. I don't know how well it's coming across on camera, but you can see it being then pulled into the ballast by that water mix and the alcohol to help kind of disperse that out. And so it is running off down the sides quite nicely. And then again, and just come back and do what's left in the middle and then do that other side across the top and then one more pass is probably enough it looks a little wet and again this is kind of experience i want to push that down and flatten it i really really trying to resist the temptation i think i'm going to just a little bit but for the most part once you start to get it wet and glued Try and avoid it unless you really need to. So that's it. That's all I'm going to do. Um, one quick look. Not really seeing any areas. There's maybe two or three little grains there, but otherwise, that's pretty much all clear of ballast. So I ended up working out pretty good. So, like the other lines, we'll leave that to dry. Um, come back and check it tomorrow night. It's probably then going to be the following night before we can actually go ahead. Um, and do much else and honestly that that you know do much else is is then going to be coming around and if needs be clean up um, any of the pieces of ballast so that's why you know get a very small screwdriver this one's kind of busted up from various different things that's why I use it but just kind of run that along the top of the rails and clean up parts of it so um, I'm going to go ahead and finish out the rest of these lines um, I'm probably going to take it all the way back to the junctions on that north side of the station. I'm going to leave this point work clear. I'm basically going to try and see how much I can get done with how much glue and how much ballast I have. Um, making sure that I leave enough to be able to do the point work. So I'll have uh, a little bit of a montage as I blow through and do all of this. And we'll come back and, uh, and we'll see it, see it all done. <laughs>
days my storage was about to run out. <laughs> there is now uh, those main platforms ballast so that'll make up platforms two and three, which are the two main north and then southbound platforms that would run through Newcastle Central. Um, so I did have a little bit of a problem around here where I'd already shown part of it um, because I had got um, the tracks around it spread a little bit. Went a little bit fiddlier when I was doing some of the ballast work which you might have seen in the videos but otherwise just the exact same process just all the way along. It was super super quick, sped up for you guys but that was about 40-45 minutes maybe of actual work. Um, you know, so when people say ballasting is slow and tedious, it's just like, yeah, it is. I mean, all told, uh, so where do we start out? We start out somewhere around here, and so we've run all the way around there, probably an hour or so, something like that. So that gives you some idea as to how long it took to come through and do all of this point work. And then last night was probably about two hours total doing those four platforms coming around the curves and moving around the point work so you know it does take some amount of time to do this uh, there is no denying that um, don't spray your locos with water as well you might have caught me at the end there when I was spraying that last, last set of water uh, I didn't move those DMUs out the way I don't have a whole lot of staging area I don't have the tiny yard built so it's kind of hard to move locos around but it was fine. They all stayed dry, I promise. They really did. Um, so, again, I'm going to give this uh, probably 24, 48 hours to dry. And we'll come back. And the final part, I'll just show you quickly uh, how we'll go ahead and clean up some of these sleepers. And then also show you how I will come around and do some of the point work here as well. I don't, I'm don't. i not going to go ahead and do this um, just in the interest of time because this video is already getting on uh, to be very, very long. Um, so I'll just clean up and then I'll just pick one of these points, go through again, a little how-to montage of how to go ahead and do that and then get this published while I go ahead and move on with the rest of it. Um, I'm probably not even halfway at this point, especially since I still got, uh, what, five points on this south side to then pan around. So probably not quite halfway. This is definitely going to be a slow process, but we'll let this all dry for a couple of nights give this uh you know platforms 9 10 11 and 12 another night to dry we'll give this a night to dry and then start on this point work here all right so it's been a couple of days now since we've gone ahead and done all of this ballasting so that's all now dried up i've also gone around and cleaned that up which again like i mentioned before is basically just going along and just kind of you know, meticulously and very painstakingly cleaning up uh, the, the rail ties as you go along. Uh, once you're done, then vacuum up. And so that now looks pretty good if we come down again. It's not perfect. There are some spots that will do some touch-up on here and around here. So you're just looking for some black areas where that ballast didn't quite hold. There's a few in there I can see in between the rails there. And, you know, again, it doesn't need to be 100% perfect. You're not wanting completely uniform ballasting um that you are wanting to make sure that it's covered so that's that's fairly normal that's why i'd said you have to be a little bit patient uh, when you start to put on that water and pva glue mix you'll notice areas like that that are starting to form and already pointed some of those out i have to just leave it there was a big chunk there that i mentioned i think when i had done it on the first night um you know yeah you just have to leave those and uh, we'll get back to those what I want to try and uh, do now, though, is show you how to do one of the points. So I'll look at how I go ahead and do the points, and then we'll look quickly at how I go and do a little bit of that touch-up. And then that's pretty much going to wrap up this video, and I will then somewhat quietly go ahead and do the rest of the station. So let's look now at how we would do points. Points are kind of interesting because what you're trying to do is make sure that you don't glue the points in place. Uh, so if we look at one of the points that I've got now, let's see, trying to throw it the right way. So these are electrofrog points, and I've got SEEPS PM1 point motors underneath them. So even though I've gone ahead and done all of the ballasting around here, because I avoided um, the blades and because I'd actually avoided um, totally blame one that's called the point where the, the part where the point actually moves, because I'd managed to keep all the glue away from there. I can quite happily throw those points, no problem. And I have gone ahead and tested all of my other points, and that's the same. So now this is where it gets um, maybe it's a little bit slower and boring. All I've got is just some straight PVA glue mix. I'm going to try and do this uh, without completely covering up the camera. Small old 
fine brush, not that old, but very cheap fine brush that I don't really care about. Get just a little bit of glue on. What I'm going to do is literally just paint glue inside all of the ties like this. And again, don't have to be 100% perfect. Even the ballast that we had originally just kind of dumped in and then covered with that PVA glue mix isn't perfect. It doesn't need to be. All you need to make sure is that you have at least enough coverage to hold a little bit of ballast in place so that it will cover it all up. I uh, mean, don't be. Don't be too stingy on the glue, but also don't go too overboard because after all of this, again, kind of the last thing that you want is to end up gluing, gluing those, uh, gluing those plates onto the rails. It actually wouldn't be too bad if you get a little bit of the PVA glue on now because you're not just soaking the entire thing like you would have done otherwise. So if we had followed the same procedure as we had with the rest of the track, and so we just kind of pulled the ballast in between all of these ties and then we had just you know soaked in that PVA water glue mix what would have happened is it would have just soaked all the way along and from experience I can tell you this um, what you would end up with is kind of a ridge all the way down here so you can easily break it but you know you essentially you can run an exacto knife underneath the sides and you'll get enough so that the blades are able to move um you know but then you still have that little ridge of glue and water and it's you know it's kind of a lot of, of, of glue that you end up putting down there so you know you can cause you can cause some amount of damage um inside the mechanism these are pico switches inside there's a weird odd shape little spring and again i am absolutely terrible as to what all these different parts are called but there's an odd shape little spring and so if you're kind of too forceful then uh then you can break that and then it's kind of game over for the point um and then it gets like I say, super duper exciting because then you're trying to figure out how you're going to now replace a point when you've already ballasted around it um Thankfully, I've never come to that step where I've had to go ahead and do that, but um, I've seen others where they've done it. If, oh, if, you know, they were just doing repair work and, and stuff like that. Not, necess not necessarily that they, had, that they had screwed up doing their balancing or anything like that. Um, but yeah, it's not, it's not a super fun procedure. So, I guess I'm just kind of figuring out how to carefully get these in place. Just gently move that blade out the way. Hopefully I'm not completely covering up the camera or it's sounding too weird as I'm leaning right in. And again, there's probably a little bit of glue going on the back of the blades there and that's okay. It's not too big of a deal at this point. It's not going to cause too, too many problems for us. And I am also, you can see, pending kind of around some of the other areas around that dummy point motor around here because what I want to try and do is build up the ballast here because of the way that my tracks raised up I've got then new gaps that are building underneath so I'm just gonna glue some in try and get as much glue in as I can without it being too bad a little bit off there again because this is really isn't getting glued in all that much it's actually really really easy to come back and scrap it off I mean it's the exact same procedure as where you've put down that water glue mix. You can just come down with a uh, you know, small flat blade screwdriver and just grab it off. And this stuff comes off super duper easily. So if you get it on the side of the rails and you don't want to, that's fine. Absolutely no problem there. That comes off super easy. We'll touch up there. I don't want to do too much in here because again, you can see that that whole part would move. I don't want to do too much there, but that's that's probably good enough for now. And then we're going to come, we're going to get the rest of the ballast that we had on our spoon. And this is where it's going to look like a complete mess. And again, this is part of kind of peeling back the curtains and making you realize that, yep, it's going to look like a mess when you're ballasting. Don't worry, have patience, have confidence in what you're doing. Because all I'm doing is just dumping ballast on here 
I don't really care where it's going at this point. So long as it's, you know, somewhat getting on that glue that I've put in place. And that's pretty much it. Now, there's no expectation that all oh, that's going to remain there because, again, I haven't then covered that. I'm not going to cover that. Come and grab. Here's the water PVA glue mix that we used before. This shouldn't go anywhere like that. You do not want to squirt that over. So you'll leave that. And if we move over, this is one of the points that had already been done here. That exact same procedure. Just go in and paint it. Paint in that glue, sprinkle on the ballast once that is then dried. And this, I don't know, you can easily do this after a few hours. It's probably dry enough. I'll probably leave it overnight just to make sure. Then you use that battery powered vacuum cleaner to vacuum it up. Now, what you might find if we take a step back, these are the points I said that I've already done. If you look very, very super duper closely, you might see there's an ever so slight difference in the coloring ever so slight and you have to look super duper close and actually you can't tell now that it's been a couple of days maybe a little bit in here you can tell right in here that there's some that is that little bit lighter um, basically because you haven't um, coated the entire um, the entire um, ballast it doesn't have that uh, clear coat of PVA glue on it so it does look slightly different um, but again, patience, trust, you're going to go ahead, or you're probably going to go ahead and weather it. I certainly am. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do it with an airbrush, or I might just use washers. Uh, Richard over at New Junction had done that. I know Tony Northeastern does that. Um, Gaza, Cheeky Tech has, uh, has done some of that as well recently. So I've been trying to figure out how I'm going to be doing it here, and I think I'm going to go with washers, honestly, just because kind of bending, uh, you know, double jointing my wrist to try and figure out spraying the far side of some of these rails might be a little bit hard. And I think just uh, brushing on washers would work. But anyway, regardless, even if there is a slight difference in the color of the ballast, um, where you're painting it into these point works, you won't actually end up no or you shouldn't end up noticing it once it's all been weathered. So now if we come in you know, that's super duper obvious because we kind of piled it on, but you can see that it is that little bit lighter. Um, once we vacuumed it up and it's been on for a couple of days and it's kind of bedded in, it's not that bad. Like I say, you have to look really closely to be able to tell on some of those spots. Once it's weathered, it's not a problem. So I'm going to go ahead um, and finish up these points. Uh, it already kind of showed the touch-up work that I'm going to do, but let's just go and look at that anyway. So I've done some touch-up work on the side, but all those other areas that I had pointed out um, where we had, you know, black spots, it's the same thing. All we're going to do is just paint on some glue like this. Paint it on, and again, you don't have to be super duper careful here. All you want to do is just get a good covering of glue that you can sprinkle on some ballast and have it hold up. And again, this is this is somewhat normal. I don't know, there's a little bit more here than than normal. The other areas are not this bad, but this is I think where I had kind of demoed an area and then I had come back and had to do the rest of it. So this is little and normal, you know, when we'd scanned around the other parts, they weren't this bad, but you know, all you're wanting to do is just paint on enough like that. Get your ballast on the spoon and just sprinkle it on so that it covers what you're doing. This is again why that battery powered vacuum cleaner really really helps because otherwise this is a lot of ballast that you would potentially lose if you just use that was way too much we just use a regular vacuum cleaner so that battery powered vacuum just make sure that we can pick all that up and we'll dump it back in the tub and then we can uh we can use that so i'm going to go ahead pan up the rest of these point works do the rest of that touch-up work i'll we'll have uh one quick lock uh, probably tomorrow night once I've got all that cleaned up. Yeah, so just one real quick look now that all of those points are done. Uh, so this is the one I think that we had looked at. I'd also then 
the pennant the other ones. I've also gone ahead and done this one just since I was kind of in the groove because that's going to be the next section of track that I'm going to ballast. Um, and if you look around you can see I've also gone ahead and patched a whole bunch of other areas. Again the same process that I had showered around here, just paint on some of that neat PVA glue, sprinkle a bunch of ballast on, probably way more than you need, let that dry, I'll then come back tomorrow, vacuum this up, and see how it all looks. Now, those point works all cleared up, let it dry overnight, went around with a little mini vacuum cleaner, and it's a kind of pitiful suction, so you have to keep stopping and banging it and emptying it out, but this is now those points all cleaned up. There wasn't a whole lot of mess on this, like there had been on the other ones, didn't really have to go through and clear too many of the sleepers, because you're just painting in that PVA glue, basically whatever. Um, isn't directly adhering to the glue, it comes straight up. So I had gone through and cleaned up all the other ones as well. And then just to prove that the points do still work, see if I can throw them in the right way. There's that one moving, which is the one we had walked on. And then we should be able to move the other ones in the same way. There we go. So that's the advantage of going ahead and painting in that PVA glue is that I don't now have any problems with those points. I'm not now having to very carefully trying to clean those up and cut away excess glue and you know potentially having to cut out the whole thing from the ballast and replace a point. So it has taken you know some amount of time. This video is wow well, probably getting on for about an hour or so in total with all of this. Um, you know but I think it's I think it's kind of worthwhile. I mean if we look at how much has been accomplished we've got all of this south throughout of the station coming around where it starts to split out we then got platforms 9, 10, 11 and 12 all done um, we've also got platforms 2 and 3 done all the way through to that north throat of the station so I'm gonna go ahead and keep ballasting I have a lot more to do um, so I hope you've enjoyed this please do let me know what you think if this has been useful if there's any other um, tips and techniques that you have like I've said throughout, you can watch 10 videos and find 12 or 13 different ways of doing ballasting. So this is just my way. Don't take this as Bible. Try it out on some pieces of test track yourself. Try it out on then some small sections of your actual layout yourself. And just over time, you'll figure out what works well for you in terms of the conditions that you have in shed or loft or garage or wherever you are, different temperatures, different amounts of humidity will affect the glue. Um, you know, some people do more glue, some people do less glue. Um, I go for a 50-50 mix. Uh, again, I use a little splash of alcohol, but again, try it out with washing up liquid. If you have that on hand, try different colors. Again, just, you know, figure out something that works well for you. Um, that's really the main thing, and, and try not to get too caught up in making everything perfect. You know, as we had gone around, if we come in really closely, you're going to find that the small little grains, um, that are, that are still probably in places where I wouldn't really want them, but when you're looking at it from a distance like this, you really can't tell. I think this looks pretty good. I've got some touch-up work to do around one of the manhole covers there, why I got some glue on that I wanted to clear off, but otherwise I feel like this has been time well spent. It's been a long time coming here in Newcastle Central, um, so do subscribe and follow along so you can see how the rest of uh, this ballasting goes on throughout the station, um, and I'm really excited to be able to actually get the platforms back on. Hopefully I'll be uh, I'll be done with this in about a week or so, and then we can see how it all looks as we start to piece it back together. Thanks for watching, take care, bye bye.